Here's this piece of half inch plate, cold rolled. It's got a little tarnish, a little rust on it, but that's all right. We, we can clean that up. So I'm just going to cut off a little piece here and try to bandsaw it into a somewhat round shape so we can mount it on a face plate. Guys, I might need some help on this one. <laughs> we got a little rodent in the shop. He's either a big mouse or a small rat. I've seen him twice, and this sucker is smart. So, look at that. He cleaned out the peanut butter out of this trap. Never set it off. And then over here, this one went off. It didn't get him. But he got all the peanut butter. He didn't go anywhere near the sticky pad. <laughs> this one over here, he cleaned it out also, never set it off. And by the way, I've I've adjusted that these are hair trigger. You've got to you've got to fiddle with these to make them real more sensitive than the way they come out of the box. All right, let's go look at the other one. Okay. He didn't come over here. This one hasn't been touched yet. And he didn't go over there to the sticky pad. <laughs> I guess we'll just have to keep trying. We'll re-bait these tonight and see what happens. Hey everybody, welcome back. So I think last time we left off, um, I had just cut out this plate and was getting ready to cut the uh, corners off of the plate. Um, so we got that taken care of. Um, and we're over here in the mill. We're, we're working in a little bit of cramped quarters here today. Uh, it's raining out. Um, I, got to, I got to go somewhere in about an hour. I still got my Bronco here in the, in the garage. So a little different setup for us. But anyways, um, I've got the wiggler here. I've already already uh, uh, zeroed in to the center. Um, not super precise, but this doesn't need to be that precise. So once we get this over in the lathe, then uh, that'll true everything up. So let me get this wiggler out of here, and we're gonna we're just gonna punch a hole in here with a uh, annular cutter just to save time. And then we get over to the lathe. Hopefully I've got enough room to get this out of here. Just enough. So we've got to change our collet. So I just use a three-quarter collet with these annular cutters. Um, one of these days I'll either make a holder or buy a holder. But uh, so far I've had okay luck just putting them in a collet. So our, our small dimension on our taper for that spindle nose is about uh, one and a quarter inches. And so we're gonna go with a 13 sixteenths. I don't have anything <laughs> between this and an uh, inch and a half, which would be obviously too big. Put that in there about an hour ago and then had to go do something else and came back and <laughs> all right let's check our speed all right. yeah, that should be okay There's the little plug. Alrighty. Love. 
love these annular cutters. They do a great job. Makes a nice clean hole. And, uh, geez, that's probably a third of the time it would have taken, you know, sizing up a couple different drill bits. Just want to show you guys how clean of a hole those cutters make. Okay, there's the top side. And it even leaves a halfway decent finish in the bore. And flip it over. There's the bottom side. And all I've done is wipe this off with a rag. I haven't done anything. No deburring or nothing. And then let's, uh, let's take a measurement here. See if I can do this and hold it so you guys can see it all at one time here. I know I'm just using a set of calipers, but it should be eight one two five and a half. Look at that, huh? Of course, it depends on how you hold the calipers and how much pressure you put on, but. I mean, that's pretty good. It's just a hair over right there. Not bad. Okay. I'm going to um, put this on the uh, lapping plate and see if I can clean it, some of that rust and such off of there a little bit. Okay, we're over at the sink. <laughs> All right, I hope you guys don't laugh too hard, but here's my, my redneck lapping plate. <laughs> and what it is, it's one of these marble slabs. It's a, um, I think it's like a pastry maker or dough maker um, plate for doing, um, you know, rolling out dough and pastry and whatnot. And it was a freebie. I don't know where, where I got it, but uh, it's, um, I mean, it's not flat enough to do precision work, but just for general lapping, it actually does a pretty good job. And what I like, I can throw it here in the sink and that way I can get a little water going and, and even a little bit of soap for lubrication when, uh, when you're lapping something. It works out pretty good, actually. Welcome back, everybody. Yeah, sorry, it's been a few days. We've been uh, busy dealing with you know, picking up another vehicle for my son uh, he's still a student working part-time <laughs> and his old clunker finally clunked its last clunk <laughs> so yeah we spent several days um, Craigslist and looking at used cars and so forth we finally got a, a halfway decent one pretty nice so that's behind us now so now we're back on this project so um, I think last time we left off, we had bored the hole here in the in our plate, which is going to be the uh, dog dog drive plate, and we went over to the um, uh, surface sanding plate to, to clean up the uh, uh, clean this up a little bit. And let me show you what I found, um, and I'm not a hundred percent sure what we're going to do yet. So let me reposition, and I'll show you guys. Okay, so I got a straight edge on here with a light behind it. And it's not real bad, but when we were when we were sanding this, the center wasn't cleaning up. So the center of this plate is low. It's um it's longitudinal. And let me flip this over. So it's the same on this side. You know, I, I was expecting that the entire plate would be cupped, but it's actually just rolled a little thinner in the middle. Kind of interesting. I mean, it's not real bad, but uh, but there's a little bit of a, of a dip. So I was hoping to not do anything to one side turn this light off you can see on the edges here where it, where, where we took more off when we were sanding or lapping 
same on this side. <laughs> but the center, you know, it made a little bit of contact, but not much. Yeah, and I was hoping not to have to do anything to this side. Um, but I think we're going to have to take a face cut, um, which is going to be interesting on our setup. Um, we're going to take a face cut if we can. Um, what I wanted to do when we chucked this up on the faceplate was have this side, the ugly side, um, facing uh, away from the headstock so that we could uh, face this off, maybe do a little relief in the middle, do our, our, um, our taper, you know, bore that, bore that hole out. Um, so, I don't know now. <laughs> I'm going to lay this out on a faceplate and I, I'm hoping that the, um, the um, bolt holes in the faceplate are concentric enough that I can just flip this over and it'll still be on center. I can face off the other side. So let's go over there and take a look. Well, I might be overthinking this, but anyways, before we go there, the, um, I did some measuring with the calipers. Just, you know, not real precision, but the, um, the whole pattern is pretty uniform. So I might be able to just flip this plate over once it's mounted to face the other side once we complete our um, machining on, on the uh, outward facing side. And I was also thinking that, you know, maybe it doesn't have to run perfectly true on the back side um, because it's just going to be a facing cut all the way across. And, you know, it might, when it's spinning, it will, and, and it's not going to really spin anyways in a, in a dividing head, not fast anyways, just by hand. You'd never notice that the machine marks might be a little off center. So... Anyways, let me work on getting this laid out and bolted up on here. I'm just going to, I'll bring it back. I'm just going to put a center in the tailstock and use that to push it, push the plate up against the, uh, the dry plate and then uh, transfer the holes. We've got our belt center in here holding the plate up against the uh, face plate. I, I think what I'm going to do, let me grab some cant twist clamps. I think I'm going to try just clamping the two together and I think I can just unscrew the face plate just by turning the pulleys here because I mean this won't, won't spin once I put some clamps on there but I think I can get it apart that way because it's really hard to get in here with the transfer punch to, uh, to mark the hole locations. Okay, hey, I think this might actually work. <laughs> I'm going to, off camera, I'm going to unscrew this faceplate um, by backing off, by turning the pulleys back here. Uh, the faceplate's not on real tight. It's just barely hand tight. So hopefully I can unscrew it and get it over to the bench where we can uh, transfer punch it. Okay, you guys will know in a couple seconds whether this works or not. It'll be a little bit longer for me. These uh, clamps worked out great, guys. So nothing slipped at all. Brought it over here to the bench and got it sitting on a block of wood. So, And I've marked out which holes I'm thinking about transferring to use for our, uh, attachment. Let me, um, I've been scheming on some other stuff here, so let me flip this over. Okay, we're handheld here, so sorry for the wiggliness. So I want to try to give this thing a little bit of character. So I was looking at this other dog plate I have. I think this is a Rockwell. And I, you know, it, it looks nice to have, a, you know, a little rim around the outside and, and a little hub area in the center. So what I want to do is relieve, um, some of this material not very much just a you know just a little bit just to give it a little bit of character so we got to leave a hub area here in the middle for our our taper and also our three attaching uh, bolts 
but then I want to relieve this area and then leave about a 3 8 rim around the outside. And then, of course, we're going to have to have a couple slots for our lathe dogs. And I've got a bunch of different ones. Some of these are pretty fat, but I think we'll be okay. And then I've got some skinny ones also. And you can see I've, I've kind of marked where the, where the screw holes are going to be. And originally I was just going to bolt this on and, uh, you know, turn the outside, turn the hub area. But that wouldn't work for relieving this area. So I'm going to go with quarter inch. I'm going to drill and tap these. And then when we're making the relief cut, it'll just trim a little off the... Uh, ends of the holding screws won't hurt anything and I also want to reuse those holes um, and remember this is the back side so we these this will be on the other side which will be flat and I want to put I mean, this is just an example piece but I, I want to be able to screw on a couple of pieces on each side of the dog slot with uh, some grub screws so that you can lock the dog in there, um, you know, to eliminate the backlash. Because uh, you don't, you know, obviously you don't want backlash if you're going to do any gear cutting. So, this is all just laid out by eye here, just roughly didn't measure anything to speak of. Just a kind of anti-bozo <laughs> layout. So, I think I'm ready. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and transfer punch those holes. And then we'll break this down and I'll meet you guys over at the bridge port. So it's been about four days since we did the uh, transfer punch layout on our plate here. And I got it set up over here in the mill. We um, were sitting on some one, two, three blocks clamped down. I've already centered up on the first uh, center punch mark with the wiggler. So we're ready to go here. Let me, uh, Put in a centering bit. Center drill, I mean. Okay. Whew, that's a center drill's got some run out of it. That side looks a little better. Okay, we got a number seven. We're tapping quarter twenty holes here. We're tapping four quarter twenty holes.
Okay, well, we got three more to go. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that. So let me get the other three done and uh, we'll bring you guys back. We're back over at the workbench, guys. So we got all our holes drilled and chamfered and tapped and yada, yada, yada. And just checking, just doing a visual check here of our alignment. And we're looking pretty good. And I did try it. I flipped it over and tried it on the other side. And we do have one hole that's not concentric. But I think we'll be okay. This is the side we're going to do the majority of the machining on or turning on. So... I'm going to flip this the other way so we can face off the other side first and get it bolted on here and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, we got it bolted up and let me show you what we got here. So this, this is just for our facing operation. So this is the side that's going to remain flat. We're just going to take a cut just to face this off. And we'll just uh, we'll just take down the uh, the uh, protruding uh, uh, ends of the screws at the same time. So we we had a little challenge. Um, the um, the bolt pattern in this uh, faceplate is not perfectly symmetrical. It's pretty close, but there's a little bit of tolerance. And I was hoping. Because we're laid out for that, we're, we're laid out for our plate to be flipped over, and then the holes line up. So I was hoping that when when mounting it this way for the face cut, that we would find at least four of the uh, bolt holes that would line up, you know, using different configurations. And we got real, real close, but we had one bolt that was just maybe five thousandths off. You know, it was almost going in. So what we did, since we've got these um, spacers in here, I don't know if that's showing up or not, um, we got a little tolerance to work with. And what I did is I took one of the bolts, and I'll show you still. I took one of the bolts and just and just relieved the threads just a little bit from uh, from the underside of the head out to oh somewhere in here so that uh, when we go through the faceplate, it's got a little room to, to adjust. And uh, I think that's gonna work out fine. So we're ready to mount this up in the lathe and uh, take a face cut. So let's go get set up over there and bring you back. All right, we're uh, set up over here at the lathe. And let's just see how it's going to run after we put the uh, lathe in gear. All right, let's try that again. So don't worry about the uh, fact that it's not running on center. All we're going to do here is take a face cut. Let's uh, go for a little more speed here. I got a little little out of balance, but um, I think we'll be all right. All right, let me get set up with a cutter, and we'll bring you back.